<laughs> Robin. So we got Joe Rogan, we got Chuck Liddell, and now we got Penn Gillette in Hello. studio. And uh, he already yeah. knows what you were going to say live on the air because of his damn Twitter. The Twitter, they uh, tell you yeah. everything, you know. Yeah, they, they talk really to don't. you on the Twitter. They send you stuff, and they said, and and I apologize so much. <laughs> you just, uh, I, you're absolutely right. Whatever happened is true. <laughs> I apologize for it. You know what I just realized? Penn has some some parts of his voice sound a bit like Jesse Ventura. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the libertarian parts. <laughs> yeah. There's something about his, his voice, and I was just thinking, well, what a great combination to be bullshit and bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> you know, your show, which is calling out bullshit, and his show, which is embracing it's it. Complete and bullshit. Loving yes. it violently. It could be a complete, it could be a complete symbiotic yeah, relationship. It would be amazing. Just, just completely it's a cycle yeah. it right through. I'm uh, talking about thermite paint. Thermite. Turn down the <laughs> trade centers. Really? Did they paint the walls while people were working in Freeze there? Free ball, fall speed. Have you ever have you ever seen a, a, a crew come in to destroy a building yeah. with the work that has to be done before they actually press the button and bring it down? You're telling me they did that while people were working in there and not a, didn't upset one cubicle? Really, yeah, Jesse? Oh, you're, well, I was a Navy SEAL. I know. Uh, whatever. I serve my country. Did you? I'm uh, glad, proud of your service. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm sorry, but that doesn't mean I believe that fucking someone went in with a paint roller with a fucking coyote from the Roadrunner paint and fucking brought down the Trade Center. You fucking oh, nuts. Thermite. Thermite paint. What's your Navy SEAL physics and chemistry change? Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> I was a, excuse me. Me, sir, I was a demolition man. <laughs> it was a demolition dumb. man. Really? We, uh, okay. we, we, we played this, uh, we did this like Q&A thing in, in uh, Florida, Florida State University, and it was where the um, the, the ta don't tase me bro thing happened. Oh, it was yeah, in the yeah. actual room. <laughs> oh, and, uh, did you feel it in the, the air? The, the guy <laughs> that booked us was the guy that told the police officer, go over there and shut that guy up. And it was great because uh, the culture of Tase me, bro. You know, don't tase me, bro. Is 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 national, right? But at this particular school, this guy stood up, and you know, the first question of the night, he stands up, and three video guys stand up with him, <laughs> and he goes, uh, "I want to ask you a question, Mr. Gillette." And I go, "Sure." And he goes, "You did the bullshit show without watching Building Seven go down. I'm calling bullshit on you. The 9/11 was a conspiracy." And he goes on yelling at me. And the great thing was the audience. You know, 1,200 people. Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. The chant just starts. And it's really hard God not damn. to laugh your ass off. Of and he finished his point. I, you know, I said, no, I, I haven't watched. Uh, I certainly saw the video, but I didn't watch it in detail. And yes, I've read some of the stuff you said, but certainly not all of it. How can you go on TV without reading everything about it? Then no one can go on TV yeah, right. about anything ever. But no, yeah, I, 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 I didn't go into some of this. And I'm, but the whole time I'm talking to this guy in like a, a standard kind of Q&A thing, the audience, tase him, tase him, tase him. <laughs> just fabulous. Those 9-11 truthers, of it, some of them are so fucking crazy, you almost wonder whether or not they're government agents designed to make the 9-11 conspiracy look ridiculous. There. Yeah, 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 to make it look silly. Like Joe Rogan. Yeah. Really? <laughs> some of them are so over-the-top fucking crazy. But you know, about it. I, I read this thing, and then I haven't been able to find it since. So it's possible when I say I read this, it means I made it up. <laughs> um, but the the uh, the. The Lincoln assassination, the Kennedy assassination, any big sort of uh, huge tragedy, it seems like 15 years later, you know, 10 years later, you get this whole conspiracy thing yeah. that pops up. It seems mm. to be just part of the way human beings deal with things. Cause it's so hard to believe that Lee Harvey Oswald, one loser nut, yep. changed the world that much. And it's so hard to believe those 9-11 um, people did that much to everything that much. You believe yeah. Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone? You know, yes. Really? I, I, you know, I'm not sure. There's stuff up there, but the thing that convinces me the most is the Luis Alvarez, who won the Nobel Prize uh, physics uh, in like the '60s, who was uh, JFK's 
really good friend. There's a paper that he wrote in the Physics Journal that just came out in like, you know, 68 or something. Uh, Luis Alvarez, that is very compelling. He does the sound stuff and that kind of things. Although I've heard people very knowledgeable um, uh, debating this. So I've heard really... arguments on both sides that make me lean one way or another, back and forth. Yeah, go, hmm. you go back and forth and go, Depending oh, on what you I read. absolutely believe yeah. it's a conspiracy. Yeah. Wait, I absolutely but, believe it was one I, guy. What I think about is uh, the emotional thing. I so desperately want to think it was a bigger cause than that. Right. That, mm. I, that I fight against it a but little that's, bit. But I think that's the whole gist, uh, gist of, of, of the conspiracy exactly. and why people embrace it. It's because you, you want to feel like you're safer than just a few guys that can do what they did on 9-11. You want to think that it took some massive conspiracy. No, it took a few people that really hate us to do that. But evil, and that's it. evil is so rare. Evil mm-hmm. is so rare. You never encounter it. You encounter people who are wrong all the time. <laughs> you encounter people doing stupid things all the time. But someone choosing to do something evil is so rare that I don't think we're good at processing it. Yeah, we, hmm. uh, and I think we want to be part of something bigger. Sure. It's and, better to have yeah. an evil God than no God to some people. Right. It's, you know, yes. Chaos is so frightening. And the mm-hmm. fact that we're all struggling desperately to do our best and we still fuck things up is to some people horrifying. Thought. Didn't we People, all? Were we all under the impression that like uh, the White House and the Pentagon and everything had these missile banks that would come up and shoot anything out of the sky <laughs> that was trying to come toward Washington? And then you realize, no, no. <laughs> they, it's just like any gig that you have, any job you've ever had. Yeah. People just fuck shit up. They drop the ball. They don't listen to the guy next to them. And that's exactly what happened. But even worse than that, they do the best they can. Yeah, yeah. And that's the best they can. That's the scary part. There are times when I have done all my homework, all my preparation, been focused, worked hard, and still been a devastatingly uh, incompetent fuck up. Yeah. And that's what terrifies Not me. Not on the bullet catch. The, that, the person, that would the be people, tragic. The people that don't prepare and don't listen to the guy next to them, that works into my worldview. It's the guy with a good heart, who's smart, working as hard as he can, that then fucks up my Just life. Just missed That's something. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. You know, doing his best. There's doing his best <laughs> and a better job than I would be doing, and he's fucking it up. There's something intoxicating about secret information, about oh, yes, uncovering yes, yes. secrets and uncovering, like, UFO shit. Like, I have friends that are just fucking obsessed with UFOs, and they're like, you know, did you see the newest video? Like, no matter what it is, they just... I, I, there was a great quote. Yeah. From Spielberg, which was just this fabulous quote where he said, I'm so surprised that with all the video technology mm-hmm. everybody carries with them, we're not getting more UFO uh, mm-hmm. video. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of like, the... wonder why that could be, Steve. Well, yeah. let's, let's think about that. Every single motherfucker on the planet <laughs> has video running 24 hours, and huh, no more videos coming out right, of right. UFOs. No matter yeah. what happens, someone <laughs> is videotaping it. Uh, yet, uh, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, we were getting these still photos, Polaroids, <laughs> UFOs all over the place. Now everyone's got it. The phones are cameras, and we don't see shit. We don't see much. Don't you see, see some much. great CG work that some people do in their basement. You're like, wow, that looks pretty good. That's all yeah. right. But it looks too good. You know, mm. I've seen a few of those where uh, it looked like a genuine uh, flying, some type of alien flying device. I think the idea of something from another planet that has to come here in a big metal ship is just yeah, yeah. so archaic. Yeah. Like if there is something that's so advanced. You know, whether or not they've been around, maybe they're in a solar system that doesn't have asteroidal impact issues, and so they've been allowed to evolve for a million years ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. They can probably just go but wherever the fuck they want. fog bank. But, but yeah, they exactly. arrive in a fog bank. And as they look a... like a tree. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> why, do they, why do they have to be but a metal ship? Yeah. <laughs> evolution is not going toward intelligence or exploration. Uh, evolution is a crapshoot. And you can be very highly evolved, like a cockroach, and not go to another planet so the f- mm. another million years of evolution without the sur- without the savannah without the looking for 3d vision for fruit without the walking <laughs> upright without the campfires without all of that stuff you get an entirely different outcome mm. so sure. you can evolve if it forever grows in that way and, and it still, doesn't yeah, go to intelligent go another life. way yeah. right i guess but yeah. you can also go intelligent and not uh exploratory yeah why does right. interplanetary uh, exploration have to be the 
be all end all of intelligence. It's like, well, they're so intelligent, of course they'd be able to travel here. It's like maybe that isn't their thing. Or maybe they don't <laughs> want to. Maybe well, they don't they even want, want to. to. Yeah. I think there the are things idea that I'm is smart that enough you... to do that I don't do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> there are things, you know, there are things that I'm smart. Right. Even a guy like me, I'm yeah. smart enough to do certain things. I don't do them. Yeah, I bet given the instructions, I could defuse a bomb. <laughs> I choose not to. <laughs> yeah, I saw Hurt Locker. It doesn't look that tough. No. You put the suit on, you go in, you cut snip right a few one. wires. But it's you always, know what? Don't not cut me. that wire. <laughs> it's Shit. always not. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, blue or red. Blue or red. Too late. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, it, it I think probably the idea... feels pretty great when you defuse the bomb. You know oh, what? It probably, probably does. does. I'm sure it does. I mean, it feels awful, 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 awful great. <laughs> <laughs> awful, 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 awful. Which is, which you know. For sex, a lot of times it's like that. <laughs> oh, 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 great. great. Same feeling. You know? <laughs> hey, Penn, what are you doing in town? We know, but for the radio audience, because uh, you, you saw something last oh, night. Yeah, that... I saw well, we, we did Jimmy Fallon, which was exciting, because yeah. I got to be in a, uh, in a room with Leon Russell. And the incredible thing is, we walk over to Leon Russell, you know, just to blow him. He's the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> I don't know Tell who he is. Leon Russell, uh, piano player yeah, uh, with, a... for Joe Cocker, but he's also just done an album with Elton John. But he played piano for Sinatra, Phil Spector. Everybody. Every yeah, long gray so hair, spectrum. long gray beard. You've seen this guy. Nuttier than a shit house. Yeah, you've seen this guy. <laughs> and, you know, he's in like a wheelchair with a cane, just being so much what do you cred. Mean a cane with a wheelchair. Well, no, he was he, he's in a cane. To get <laughs> oh, to the wheelchair. okay. But Stop he's people. got you know this beautiful <laughs> long white hair, and just <laughs> crazy, crazy. And we walk over to him, you know, and I just go, "Hello, Mr. Russell. My name is Pan." Teller goes, "Hi, nice to meet you." And he goes, "Glad to hear you talk, Teller." And all of a sudden, oh, it washed shit. over me that he knew something about us. <laughs> and I'm like going, why are you wasting your time watching Penn and Teller when you could be playing the piano? <laughs> <laughs> but then I went after that and saw uh, saw Book of Mormon, you know, Trey and, Trey and Matt's show. Yeah. And I think it might, present company excluded, it might be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, I could not believe how it, it was just, it was so, you know, art, the purpose of art is to inspire. And then it gets to a certain level, and it makes you want to give up. You, know, you, listen, to, you listen to Bach and go, I, I don't have anything yeah, to Am I going to pick an instrument <laughs> up and really try to be proficient at this? Yeah, no. And, uh, this is so good. It is a moment without even uh, a moment of cynicism. It's pure. It's beautiful. It's, uh, it's just loving. It's funny, funny, funny. And uh, it takes apart uh, religion in a beautiful way, but replaces is with that this kind of love and beauty it's just it's the greatest thing wow ever. they've been working oh, on it they've been working on it seven <laughs> they've been working on it seven years and uh seven years yeah and i you know afterwards i i saw matt and trey and just said i, I just couldn't and then you know I was so effusive that they thought I was bullshitting them. Oh, really? You cross over that it's like, line. wait a minute. I, said, I think he's fucking with us. I, yeah. I said, you know, Trey, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. And he went, oh, I was hoping you'd like it. I said, no, no, it really was. Because you, know, you, you go, it, it sounds like bullshit. There's so much Hallmark card yeah, shit yeah. out there. And I have seen, it's true, I have seen a zillion shows and gone up and said afterwards, that was great. The episodes you, that they did of their the show where thing. they were drawing, where they had Muhammad yeah. and Muhammad yeah. was in a bear oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of really one good. of the most bizarre moments in our culture that this is tolerated. Yeah, yeah. That this nonsense is tolerated where you're not even allowed to draw to this draw guy. The, uh, and, and you're gonna of on Muhammad, Comedy yeah. Fucking Central, you're gonna go along with that and, yeah. and censor this because you know there's the the amazing. cartoonist in Seattle. Yeah. Yep. Who did draw Mohammed Day, who was put into witness protection uh, you know, uh, not uh, not witness protection, wasn't a witness, but put you know underground, changed her name and everything with no money from us. You know, we gave her no money whatsoever. She did it on her own dime. Lost uh, her whole career, which was a cartoonist, oh, wow. which is a hard career to get. And, you know, people want that a lot. Took all that away from her because she did draw Mohammed Day. Mm -hmm. And you know, people were saying, well, what what could the government do? And I said, you know, Obama could go on and say, you know, I have respect for religion. I really like it. I respect everybody's right. But you know, we have freedom of speech here. So I'm going to draw Mohammed. And while I'm on the subject, <laughs> I, have, oh, I, have, I have I have seventy five. <laughs> 
um, FBI guys who have volunteered to draw Mohammed with me on camera. And there's their name. And by the way, they're all packing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're all happy to do that. So these people you need to go after, too. Because I think you can show respect, but you should not force people to do something out of fear. Yeah. And respect and fear are two different things. Well, they just take it to the deepest level possible. We'll if you even people. draw our dudes, we'll yeah, kill yeah. everyone. We'll, we'll right. kill you. You're and, not even allowed to draw our guy. And that doesn't seem like just some radicals saying that that seems a little kind of it creeps into the mainstream part of that religion i don't yeah, know yes. or at least it at does. least the mainstream part of the religion isn't saying hey don't go killing people for drawing muhammad they're like well you shouldn't draw them yeah i'm not gonna kill you but <laughs> well, well, you'll probably Rushdie, get killed salman rushdie still has to hide yeah he's still hiding I mean, that was like in the know, 80s right yeah yeah well, he on he on here see ali you know who wrote infidel who's my you know she, she i write her email down again through incredible number of remailers. I don't know wow, what really? And she yeah. says stuff like, you know, um, I'd uh, when I'm in Vegas, I'd like to come visit you. And I was right back and go, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could just see my children and not me. <laughs> no. But, you know, she, I don't know if you read the book Infidel, but it, it's amazing. She, her death threat, um, uh, Theo Van Gogh, the filmmaker in Holland, in broad daylight, stabbed through the heart. Oh, yeah, with yeah. With a note that said, I'm going to kill, someone's going to kill you on her CLE. So getting a threat that is pinned on your friend's chest <laughs> through yeah. his heart and kills him, how do you live with that kind of terror? Yeah. You know, just horrible. And she's she lives with this all the time. I mean, Solomon, they've backed off on a little bit. But on her CLE, I was talking to a security guy that was handling her speaking and said, well, we just finally gave up. When she's wow. going to appear, the death threats are so constant. She was supposed to speak on this cruise, you know, a skeptic atheist cruise, and they just finally said we can't have her on the ship. Wow. What was her? Uh, what What is Infidel? Infidel is her um, autobiography. She's uh, Somalian, and she went from being um, a religious and beaten by her father, and her clit slid off, you know, cut off and shit, and all this stuff, to being an outspoken atheist with everybody in her family and many people in the world trying to kill her. She went to the Dutch Parliament and so on. And the story of Infidel is amazing because it showed you do not ask the American military to do something you don't want them to do. Uh, they called uh, They called the U.S. and said, we can't protect Ian Hirsi Ali. She just got this knife. We're scared. We can't protect her. Can you guys do something? And then she writes about how she's in her apartment the day after. Uh, special ops guys from the U.S. just show up, wreck her cell phone, take her out. She can't tell any friends, put her on a plane, fly her to Logan, then get her, uh, you know, uh, a military plane, fly her to Logan, and then drive her to Maine, <laughs> and then put her in a little hotel where they rip out all the phones and everything, and put a guy sitting next to her with an automatic weapon and a guy out front and say, "Now you're safe." <laughs> and she goes, "No, I want to talk to my friends. I want to do something." They go, "Our job is just to keep you alive. Wow. We don't care about anything else." And the whole book is, you know, her sitting talking to the guys, going, "But, but I need to have some sort of life." And he goes, "Hey." You're not dying on my watch. <laughs> can, I, can, I wow. out, can I go out and get something to eat? I'll send someone to get you anything you want. All I know is you're not dying on you're my not watch. Dying, wow. yeah. Yeah. So she just basically outlined, she, her, she told a story of her life, yeah. you know, and yeah. yet that was enough to. Well, no, she also, she also. Criticized you know, the religion. Uh, being an apostate is the worst thing you can do. It's worse than being us. It is being a member of a religion and then leaving it. And she was a devout Muslim, and now she is an atheist, and you can't do worse than that. Wow. And yeah. she's a woman. Which wow. is you know oh, another. Quite. That's the first strike against her. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, she and you know and she got this award that we got. Uh, we got it one year and she got it the next for this you know free thought type award. And we had to do this video that uh, that you know congratulated her and kind of gave the award over to her. And I said you know we're completely behind you, Ayan. Unless by being behind you, it means a fatwa is on our heads. <laughs> In which case, we think you went a little too far. <laughs> and she's also unbelievably hot. Really? So she is smart, brave, and sexy. Without a clit. But really, yeah, who needs yeah, it, right? Yeah, that thing. If, uh... It doesn't help me. <laughs> But it, she's uh, she's an amazing one of the true heroes of our time. And you keep in touch wow. with her? Well, not much. I mean, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <want> to <laughs> the same state. 
at the same time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close to Don't each other. Don't try to get through to her through. Well, I said, but I mean, if you if you want her on your radio no, that's show, okay. <laughs> she will come on. We got on, Joe Rogan, We're and good. she will come on, and she'll do it free. But it is something like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of security. Wow. Get, and then once you have her sitting at the mic. Everybody is trying to kill you. Why is it not trying to <laughs> What a crazy fucking religion. Do you really think that the way to combat that is for someone like Obama to get on TV and actually say something like that and draw a picture? I mean, what? How do you somehow or another uh, I think, calm down I don't know that well, storm? It's the question is whether you want, and I don't know the answer to this except for myself, which is I won't. But um, <laughs> right, I don't know whether hear. it is better to show respect or whether to stand up stand up against it. I yeah. mean when when the when the Danish cartoons came out and mm -hmm. American uh papers wouldn't print them. Right. I mean that's a yeah. very big decision. Mm -hmm. And they say they didn't pre print them out of respect. But and, it's fear. There's well, a difference. Yes, that's the whole argument. Yeah. I mean if if they printed them out if they did not print them out of respect, that is a defense defensible position. If they didn't print them out of fear, then we gotta rethink that home of the brave thing. Well you know what I yeah. <laughs> I've seen uh, I've seen pictures in the paper of piss Christ. Yeah, sure. Where it's the crucifix in urine in the jar mm -hmm. with the light behind it and maple uh, syrup, right? And the yeah, no, uh, no that's S um, Sarin. Oh, what the hell was his name? It begins what with an S. Maple Thorpe, yeah. dude. Didn't he do that, that one? Like? Then there was the, didn't do that one. Didn't didn't do piss there Christ? was the um, but it was the same time. Mary, Mary made out of elephant manure. Yeah. There's another one. <laughs> it's like, shit. But, but the, yeah, yeah, b b manure, manure, shit. Uh, they, but they put that in the paper. <laughs> now, out of respect for the religion, they because they knew but, Catholics were, were very upset with this, uh, they probably shouldn't have put that in. But they know that the place isn't going to get firebombed well, I used for to the do most a, part. a bit about how you never see a Catholic suicide bomber because none of us believe in it that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Catholics you know, are like, eh, we're not really real. sure. Uh, right. We did bullshit. out in my head. We did bullshit. <laughs> for eight years, and we were, uh, I mean, just last night at the uh, Book of Mormon, I had a chiropractor come up and uh, and start, oh. start, uh, start uh, hassling me. Giving you a little shit. Yeah, 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 for that. But it's amazing that people say, you know, why do you guys pick on Christians, and uh, why do you not mention Islam? And the, the answer is, very simply, because Christians do not hurt other people overall. Overall, I mean, yeah. We have, we have, we have abortion. Mm -hmm. that uh, anti-abortion people have killed some people, and that is unforgivable and horrible. But the fact is that I am able to say whatever I want about Christianity without fear of violence. And one thing I learned on bullshit was incredible respect for Christians. I mean, mm -hmm. I go to bat for them all the time because I would get letters saying, it's nice to see you stating your opinion passionately. I uh, I believe in Christ. I'm praying for you. And I, I love your show and you do a wonderful job. Stuff like that. I mean, just if you want to talk about the purity of the marketplace of ideas, you know, Thomas Jefferson's dream, I'll tell you, the, the Christians mm -hmm. in America in the 21st century have got it fucking down. That's and I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if I believed in my heart that abortion was murder. I don't know if I would have the restraint that so many people have on that. <laughs> and when we, of all the shows mm. we did, we get asked, you know, who gave you the most hassle? And the answer is the 9-11 conspiracy people. Yeah. They're the only ones that showed up at our offices and threatened people there and called people who worked on the show at home. What do you think uh, happened to oh, Christians man. to make them the calm Christians of the art today? It's just that it's so successful? Because if you go back like, to oh, the Inquisition, oh, man. Yeah, not so mean, Galileo, they, they the did go through their phase. <laughs> you couldn't even say that the everybody. earth wasn't the yeah, center yeah, of the yeah, universe. Yeah. Yeah. They threatened to burn you if you fucking said the earth uh, wasn't the center I of the universe. Say. I think one of the things that happened to them was the Enlightenment, and nothing that happened to them was America, what is she which doing? is a really, really good idea. Some girls I guess she's engaged. Oh. Oh. Are, are you engaged? Yes, I just got engaged a second ago. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Look at you. I know. Oh, man, it's a mashup uh, marriage. Where, where's your guy? He's right here. Congratulations. Hey, there you go. Nicole from the Morning Mashup. Very good. Congrats. Yeah, weird timing, she's but all congratulations. All so <laughs> That's how chicks, how important marriage is to them. <laughs> I know. We're in the middle of talking that, about that religion right, right. and freedom and people uh -huh. dying and what happened Jesus. in America. Yeah, is, I just died. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my
precious. Look at the precious. We she all, she <laughs> held that ring up. Precious. She held that ring up. Oh, we all had to pretend that we cared. And we didn't get the same. Oh, has it. We didn't get the same reaction from the guys. Like, yeah. yeah he was just like, <laughs> also, we were really good at reacting. Yeah. We? Yeah. We yeah. Hey, hey, congratulations. congratulations. Oh. She, she felt so hey. entitled. She opened up the door while a radio show was going on. Yes. Had no idea what we were talking about. Going waved, deep. And led with her ring. Magic she ring. led with her ring. Yeah, it came in first. Came first, in yeah. Precious. <laughs> Holy shit. That was really weird. Uh, uh, I'll tell you a marriage story. The answer is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Uncle Enough of that. Yeah, take Listen, a seat. Listen to Uncle Anthony. Yeah. I can, I can <laughs> set you straight. I'll spin you a yarn about marriage. It's a little thing called divorce. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, and we can even spell it because it's country western music. <laughs> we still haven't seen Ari's asshole. Oh, great. What are we doing, Joe? You want to see? You want to see Ari's asshole? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hit play on that thing. Is. What is this called again? Jew clam. Jew clam. Yeah, you can go you to jewclam.com. No, I think I have. I think it's already up here. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, the show. There you got goes. any sound? Uh, I don't. Uh, you don't want to hear anything. You just need to see it. Uh, so nasty. <laughs> Watch. He shows it. He's gonna. He threw toilet paper at him. He's gonna turn and show his asshole as he's wiping. He's just taking a shit with so the door good open. At color commentary. This is. Thank you. It's natural we, for me. We this is uh, the Austin, uh, the Cap City in Austin, the green room. And now here, Ari's gonna. We figured we had it dumb the showdown. There it goes. <laughs> What? What's he doing? Why? What are you, oh my God! You got hemorrhoids. God. You got hemorrhoids. Oh, God. I don't know, this is a shit thing out of my ass. It's precisely as advertised. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm not one to sell you a bag of what fake that, things, <laughs> false bill of goods. <laughs> no, this is exactly what it's supposed I know, to be. I think that's what they're trying. Is that it? You think? Well, you can. Or we go close up. Oh no, there's too much time left in this video. We have, we have another minute to oh, go on the yeah, video. Not... Oh, his pants are up. That's not a good sign. Oh, my God. You've had girls lick your ass before? Oh, One girl lick it. She was just... Oh, doing, now it's recapping. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't into it. I was like, this is like licking my knee. I don't, this doesn't do anything for me. His asshole's calloused up. <laughs> yeah, that really is. Wow, all right. He, he said he doesn't like having his ass licked. It's like it's, uh, mid when it's mid-inflamed, it's bad. Really? Yeah, yeah, it is. That was a bad one. Wow, you really um, aren't shy when it comes to things like that, huh? I thought it was shit sticking out of my ass. I didn't realize that it was an inflamed hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I just hadn't gotten it all the way. So you wanted a second opinion <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> well, you, what What's eight months later all about? That'll follow you. Oh, we took a picture of it eight months later. Because he wanted to let us know that it's all healed. Oh, oh, oh geez, God. That looks uh, like Homer's mouth. That really <laughs> is. Kind of, it's disturbing. Now, this is much later. He's going to show you that it's all healed up. All right. Much better. Wow, infrared. Uh. <laughs> what's, what's, That's crazy. what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> we got issues. <laughs> We're bored. Being stand up comedians, <laughs> man. Not having boundaries isn't always good. Yeah, that's true. You kind of Joe Rogan.net. Go off. <laughs> so a little advertisement. Sure. Let people know where sure. where to look at Ari's asshole. Yeah, well, you got that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then what his the big hell ball is bag. going on here? Yeah, yeah Penny's got a huge ball bag, too. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's Book of Mormon, one of the greatest works of the uh, yes, <laughs> the yes. century. But Book of Mormon. Right next right, to right 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 this. <laughs> when does Book of Mormon open up? Uh, I don't know when it opens. I got oh, it's it. It costs $519 for Charlie Sheen. What? Up to. Wow. So sold out New York City Jesus. shows. What is he going to do? Uh, next week it opens. It opens next Thursday, I believe. Next Thursday? I'm going. Book you need to go. You need to go. I'll go. What is... Well, it's a play, right? It's, it's, a, it's a musical. A musical. And a musical that you will actually... Did you like uh, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut? Yes. Loved okay. it. Loved it. Uh, I believe it's better than that. Ooh, and it's live, words. and it's amazing. Team America is the funniest thing. I, yeah, I never that's... laughed harder in a movie than I Team America. I believe it's better God than damn. both of those. Pukes and I love incredible. Both. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. well, why, why don't they put it out like as a movie? So... Well, I mean, the, the, when you see it, it's the perfect form for it. Oh, really? I mean, one of the cool things about it is that it's not a movie. You know what I mean? Oh. They're actually doing it. They're there in front of you, and you have all the actors really doing it in real time is great. And, you know, uh, another thing, if we're going to rave about the United States of America, and the audience is just out of their minds cheering. It's really? Just really it's, it's as purely blasphemous as it could be <laughs> with a humanist, just love everybody point of view, and the, and the audience is going absolutely crazy. If you have any cynicism in you, like everything on Broadway is shit, and they just do this fucking Spider-Man garbage all the time, <laughs> 
<laughs> this yeah. will just wash that away. Not only will you love Trey and Matt and everyone in the cast, you will also love everyone in the theater with you. When you say blasphemous, though, isn't Mormonism in and of itself blasphemous? Well, not within the Mormon church. Uh, but this is blasphemous to whatever supernatural beliefs you have. They are contradicted in this show. Have they taken any shit for, uh, for this? Have, I believe been... none because we're living in the fucking United States of America well, where you're allowed to say what you want. And you true. know something? Gonna... We really believe that. Mormons are pretty <laughs> relaxed about it. Yes, I've, had, Mormons chill, are I've had a bunch of Mormons come up to me and say they thought my Mormon jokes were funny. Oh, sure. really? Yeah. Well, I, yeah okay. I used to do a bit about, you know, the, the reason why Mormons are against gay marriage is because if someone can talk you into being a Mormon, they can probably talk you into sucking their dick. <laughs> like, they have to be careful of that shit. You know? <laughs> God damn, yo. <laughs> and I've had Fucking a lot of joke. Mormons who come up to me and they think uh, it's joke, funny. Man. Yeah. That is, a, that is a fabulous joke. It's true. <laughs> That's why they're scared of it. Wonderful. That's why they're spending so much money. They don't They don't know. You know, they don't want to all of a sudden find themselves in love with a man and yeah, not even know yeah. how it happened. <laughs> uh-huh. But there you've got, you know, you've got, you've got a religion that is completely whack job. Yeah, yeah. In every single way. And yet, when you point out that it's whack job, they do not hit you. Yeah, they do not right, threaten you. Right. It is astonishing. You don't have they to worry don't that even you're do economic beheaded. boycotts, really. They're very they nice people. Very nice. And they kind of win you over by just, I mean, just such politeness, so nice in every way. You know, because I. I've never had a drink uh, of alcohol in my life, and I've never had any uh, recreational drugs, which I know you don't approve of, Joe, but I, I you're that. so tolerant. Disturbing. You're so tolerant about it. And I will go to, uh, I will go to like, you know, every Things doctor. Things I could show you. <laughs> every doctor in um, in Vegas is a Mormon, you know. Really? And, and, oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's a huge, huge number of Mormons. And I'll go in, and, I'll, and they'll, you know, they'll go through the whole thing and go, oh, oh you must be a Mormon. And I'll go, well, except for that, you know, believing in God thing. <laughs> we got to fall down. There. Yeah, but you got everything else. Just one little step. It's not one little step. <laughs> you don't go step. from not drinking coffee to believing a guy got golden tablets from Jesus in the 19th century in upstate New York. That's, that's a really big step. From not just only like that, he was 14. <laughs> Who's not full of shit at 14? <laughs> Everyone's a goddamn. He's, Joseph Smith found these things at 14, and when they said, well, where are they? Oh, the angels came and took him away. Yeah, he, took him. he had a magic rock, a seer stone that he would use to look through to see these golden tablets to oh, read you just, them. Yeah. Well, you just held up your iPhone, which you can't see shit through. That was a pretty bad example. He tried to do it through the case. He held up a glowing rock. He said he thought he had a rock, but he could see things, and then he held up something that you could see things in. Almost proving the point that he might have seen something in that. Well, Joseph Smith's a known con man, too. That's the most yeah. amazing thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, much like, you know, the guy who created Scientology, L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard, Hubbard was, also, was just a fucking a science fiction Mediocre author. science fiction writer. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing with uh, Scientology. I, I finally, like, I had heard about it so much years ago that I was like, I want to know what this is. And as I'm reading it, I thought I, I thought it was a goof on the religion. I actually thought I was reading a, a parody of the religion. It's like, wait, this is really it? You know, Beatons and fucking holding on to the censors, yes. and you have to drink, and, and there are actual aliens and the battle and the throwing the fucking people into the fire. And what Zenu. the fuck? Zenu. Yeah, Zenu. Yeah. Yeah. I, was in, I was in Germany and they had a uh, 24 hour camera uh, that was trained on Mecca. And I'm watching this in my hotel room. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's 24 hours they have this. And there's this this building, this square, like, look like a shed in the center with, like, it's very fancy. And everyone's milling around this, this center. And they all have the same outfit on, this very traditional white robe. And there's thousands of them. And they're all like a, like one of those ant swarms. They're going in a, in circle. a circle. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, if this was a new thing, <laughs> if this was something that someone had just invented, in Ohio, and there was a new religion that just started, mm-hmm. and they all had to go around this box and circle it. People would be fucking tripping like, out. You're nuts. They would be yeah. freaking out. They'd be scary. It would well, be that's, dangerous. That's the re- amazing thing about Scientology, is we watched it grow, uh, I guess not literally in our lifetimes, but pretty close. Pretty it, it close, didn't, yeah. It didn't yeah. start much before we were born. And uh, it, it's amazing to be at the, at the birth of that kind of thing, and then to imagine how much more powerful that stuff is if you don't have mass media, I mean, we have, we have video 
of Elvis Presley. Right. We have film of Elvis Presley. We have audio recordings. And yet you hear people say, Elvis didn't do no drugs. I mean, even in, <laughs> even in, uh, with evidence that we trust, people can say, Elvis is alive. Elvis did this. Elvis did that. And Elvis was alive during our lifetimes. And people can still make up shit when nothing in the scriptures was written until 300 years after supposed Jesus Christ. You've got to say, 300 years and they got everything right? Yeah. <laughs> Even though we can't get things accurate on Kurt Cobain, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we fuck yeah, it up, and we true. can write. We can write Kurt Cobain. Did, you know what I mean? He wasn't really that good. You know, we can write that down yeah. and remember it. But you know, it's just it's just astonishing. So if it happened uh, present day, I, I mean, uh, we're seeing the crazy shit of Scientology. And granted, Scientology is not that successful. Both the people against it and the people for it pump up the numbers. But even having over four people believe in Scientology. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, wait, yeah, a minute, wait a minute. You say not that successful. Well, first of all, they're the second largest real estate holders in Los Angeles, aren't Is they? Is that true? They own, they, they're, they're, they're trying to separate Hollywood so right, that they can own wrong. Hollywood. Really? They have yeah, a they're they're tremendous to amount of money and win. influence. Trying to and, you know, anybody that's life. ever tried to criticize them, I mean, who wasn't there someone who was trying to write a, a, a movie about them, yeah. a parody movie, and a guy got attacked, and they threw rocks through his fucking window? They, they, they used to like have, they, they, I think they used to have some pretty hardcore lawyers that would go after anybody that said anything bad about yeah, Scientology. Well, it seems like they calm down with, with that, with the litigation thing. But, uh, but that's, that's a really, yeah. for PR purposes. That's a really good point, uh, Joe. I mean, when you talk about Hollywood, uh, I think there's a huge influence. I'm not sure, and I, I may be wrong about this, I'm not sure if in mid, mid-America they oh, have much... Yeah, I can't, much I can't they won't really even see. let them in uh, in <laughs> Germany. Germany is really? illegal. Yeah, the Scientology, yeah. they're oh, like, wow. no, we, we know where not... this is going. <laughs> We've seen <laughs> we something like this before in the previous... Let me get master race rockets from the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been here. Fuck that <laughs> monsters from the sky. <laughs> I mean, no, nothing is more futuristic or apocalyptic than the World War II scenario. Oh, I know. It's, a man it's who has a vision of a master race, genetic engineering, and rockets flying through the sky. It's slamming, and then not only that, but the the, the, the most ad- advanced technology as yeah. far as like rocketry and in and, and, aviation and, yeah. and you think churchill had that crazy bad? shit <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is it really is how many shit. how many sci-fi movies have just been based on that whole idea yeah. is that, you know star wars if, if star wars isn't fucking nazis uh, uh the empire isn't nazis i don't know what is yeah it's, i watched inglorious bastards well, the other day nazis oh god okay. Yeah. Nazis. Oh, you yeah. said if, if that is a Nazis, what is? I would say Nazis. Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> can, you know what? Put that way. That's a good I point. really did sound That's silly there. Point. You ever watch that show uh, Ancient Aliens on the History Channel? I just got. Yeah. I just yeah. got yeah. turned on. Ridiculous, ridiculously stupid show for the yeah, most yeah. part. Yeah. But what every now part? and then oh, they, t- <laughs> they talk about some interesting shit. And they had Aliens and the Third Reich, and it was all I'm about s- it, about the uh, the Nazis, how into the occult they were, and how into like uh, like. You know, like Tesla's work, and all they were trying to come up with all this, you know, the crazy technological advantages over over the enemy. And yeah, they were, yeah. How they were they, doing some nutty How they shit. never got the bomb first is pretty amazing. Just well, because they, they were just, spending time on the fucking occult stuff. Yeah, on the That's occult why stuff. See, they were working on real just shit. explained it to you. And, and, you say and, that, yeah. but if no one was working on the bomb and that occult shit, if they kept working on it and figured something out, yeah. I mean, who the oh, fuck yeah. knows what they were up no. to? No, <laughs> I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about non-science based. I'm no. saying maybe some of it had to do with science. You know what? What they were doing was some pretty intense. And in you know they were they were looking like deep back into history. To Hitler the, doing the Hindu. street magic. <laughs> <laughs> Take a card. They sure, were looking at the Bhagavad a, Gita. Sure, that's and... just a that's just a thumb tip, sir. <laughs> <laughs> with all due respect, uh, Hitler, that's a thumb tip for you. It's really interesting how fixated they were on like ancient cultures and you. Know, and then the the the, the yeah, a lot of the knowledge. symbolism yeah. was taken from it. Yeah, well, the the whole uh, Roman the swastika Empire. itself. Swastika yeah. wasn't swastika a good but luck you know, sign. Yeah. If you want to build an atomic bomb, and I know you do, Joe. If you want to build an atomic bomb, it's better to go with new technology than old technology. Yeah, this yes. is true. The information yeah. on the nuclear bomb from 600 years ago, not that good. <laughs> <laughs> not that good. We'll get you there that quick. Very true. <laughs> Unless societies existed at a, at a very high rate uh, many times in the past and been wiped out. I stick with my original point. 
You I think so? I don't think there were uh, advanced civilizations that exist. I think we know pretty much what's happened for the past 50,000 years. Yeah. Mm, I, well, I don't think so. I think not only that, but more, more recently they've been showing that there is, in fact, a lot of evidence that there is advanced civilizations that were wiped out. Have you ever How studied advanced? any John Anthony West stuff? No, or not at all. Robert Schock is a geologist at Boston University, and he's one of the main guys that's working on trying to uh, change the ideas of uh, ancient Egypt. And one of the things he does is he's talking about water erosion on the Sphinx. The Sphinx is, uh, you know, this huge structure, and it's most people believe it's built about 2,500 years ago. But what the problem is, the Sphinx enclosure has massive fissures that were created by thousands of years of rainfall. And the only time they had rainfall, the last time they had rainfall in the Nile Valley was 9,000 B.C. So what this guy is saying is that most of this stuff, there's stuff that's from, you know, 2,500 B.C., but there's also shit that's probably from fucking way earlier. And there's different styles of construction, very clearly different styles of construction. Zawi Zawi Hawass is the main guy Guy, the head of uh, the Egypt studies over there in Egypt, and he's the guy, the head of, uh, he chooses who gets to, you know, study things and where you get to dig and what you get to do. He's very resistant to any ideas of predating, you know, the, mm-hmm. the ancient Egypt culture. Yeah, yeah. But this is uh, geology. This is geologists still. look at this and say, you are dealing with thousands of years of rainfall to create these fissures. There's no doubt about that. This is very clear evidence. And the last time there was that kind of rainfall in the Nile Valley is 9,000 B.C. But that still doesn't get you back, you know, to a ancient civilization that was as advanced as ours, and it still doesn't get you back more than ten thousand years. Well, you're talking nine thousand BC is more than ten thousand years. Oh, well, it's eleven thousand okay. years ago, and you're dealing with someone who can make something. You can make something incredibly complicated. Yeah, you're sure. talking about incredibly complicated, massive stone structures that were created back when they supposedly were just learning language. I mean, language is only thought to be thirty to forty thousand years. Yeah, old. but now you're talking about an advanced civilization that still just built something out of rocks. Show me an airplane. And you're talking so about be left? Like what would be left? Though? This is the big know, question. Landing gear? If, 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 if there was something like a super volcano and, you know, North America was wiped out and then thousands of years later, you know, they, they come back here 15,000 years later and they start digging through the rubble. What the fuck are they going to find? How They're going to find stone? stones? Stone? Stone? <laughs> They'll be here. <laughs> what are they going to uh, find? What are they, well, I mean, they're going to find that in 2011 there was a guy on the radio that couldn't add nine and two and get along. <laughs> 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 that, that, that one stupid mother. Motherfucker, should have probably shut up. He said 9,000 BC. I said nothing yeah. more than 10,000 years ago. I'm, I'm still embarrassed. Well, they I don't think there's some, anything left. I mean, they, you look well, at those pictures of Detroit. Flaming hot fucking nuclear piles Joe. from their <laughs> nuclear Joe. power plants. Have you looked at what? yeah? How about an iPhone? One of them. What one of them would make it. The iPhone. No, one, one that iPhone. Would be gone. One, that one thing would be would eaten make. up by the earth in a hundred years. But there would be nothing left. Been? No, yeah. stone would be. That's the thing about the Egyptian structures. Big parts of the iPhone. Get the fuck out Some of here. Metal. This thing would be rotted away, man. This thing would be, be gone. You would have a chip in there. Uh, 10,000 years later. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I don't so. know about that. I, I mean, we, we, we were assuming you. that I bet you. I bet you. if there was an advanced civilization... I bet you $5 in a 10,000 <laughs> years. You're on, Vegas boy. <laughs> I know you Vegas fucks like to gamble. <laughs> now, all we've got to do is live 10,000 years yeah. to pay this off. I mean, if you see what's going on in Detroit, how the, the, the nature is reclaiming buildings. Quickly, real quick. Oh, in Russia? Yeah. You know, there's yeah. been a, a lot of yeah. uh, ancient... Uh, like uh, not even ancient, excuse me, you know, 50, 60 years buildings in Russia that are like eating up with trees. Trees are growing inside of yeah. them, busting through them. We look at uh, the surroundings of Chernobyl and stuff yeah. where yeah, they yeah, just abandoned shit. About. It looks yeah. pretty creepy. Trees just grow right yeah. through buildings, crack through the concrete. Sure. 10,000 years? We can't even wrap our heads around what the fuck that is. Yeah. 10,000 yeah. years, it wouldn't I be much left. I couldn't even add nine and two. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was, uh, that was there's a guy sad. named Graham Hancock, and he's got this fantastic <laughs> book called Fingerprints of the Gods, and it's all about ancient structures that defy explanation and most of them have alignments that are uh, they they look exactly like constellations and there's some sort of a, uh, a connection between constructing these things and you know trying to recreate what they see in the sky and that this has occurred not just at one part of the world but many parts of the world suggesting that this was something that was done on a massive yeah. scale you know many many thousands of years before we thought of you know as human history I mean they've had to predate a lot of things very recently there's a structure they found in Turkey, there's really complicated stone structures that were like 12,000, 13,000 years old. And you saw the thing they found in uh, Spain. They believe they found what might be Atlantis. I mean, this is like real, legit geologists and archaeologists are but saying. 
Stone. Why just stone? Like, and then you're saying what's going to be around left. in ten thousand years? How about the stone stuff we made? Yeah. <laughs> so will that be that, around? That will probably Some be around. Fucking the the Big lions buildings. in front of the cornerstones and in shit in front of the library <laughs> something like that you know maybe i mean but my, not much else but all what you might be seeing is you might be seeing remnants of how powerful slave labor is too <laughs> that's well, true the problem yeah. with that is they don't even believe slaves built the pyramids i know that i know that i, I know that that yeah. stuff's out there but i'm just saying you don't know that the older stuff couldn't have been that i mean when people are when you have human life being cheaper there's certain shit you can do really well like carry rocks yeah mm. but the numbers are so huge i mean some of those monoliths that they they found that they, that haven't been moved yet that are hundreds of tons yeah. and perfectly cut and fucking enormous yeah, There's a lot of evidence that leads to... plenty of time on their hands. Time. They really did. I don't think they that's had, enough. They had 10,000 years. Yeah. They also <laughs> had to eat, and they're running around chasing squirrels and shit, trying to hit them with rocks to <laughs> feed themselves. I mean, if you talk whoa, about 12,000 years whoa, 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 ago... You're, you're talking, saying the most advanced civilization are chasing squirrels with rocks? Well, yeah. we're you talking about what ways. we're talking about. A microwave about our, that rotted away in 2,000 years. Our yeah. vision of 12,000 years ago as opposed to what may or may not have happened. If we look back, I mean, we think 10,000 years ago, we were basically throwing spears at woolly mammoths. You know, mm -hmm. that's our idea of. of Wait, humanity. you went from a squirrel to a woolly mammoth, and from a rock to a, you just went eight thousand years. Squirrels were yes. very big. I'm, I'm big at flipping back and forth between animals. <laughs> <laughs> from squirrel to woolly mammoth. Well, that's whatever you need to eat. Yes, that's the title of my new my new paper. From, from squirrel squirrels to, to woolly mammoth. mammoth. Yes. From rock to spear. The Joe <laughs> shit, we, story. shit we ate while we made buildings. <laughs> Gotta dumb it down. Yeah. It's a fascinating thing to me because when you look at what's going on with this giant earthquake in Japan, and you know, and you, you see all these different cataclysmic disasters that happen, and then you look at the fucking Yellowstone one is the one that freaks me uh, out no the most. Shit it does. The super volcano in Yellowstone oh, is a caldera the... that's fucking 300 kilometers wide. 300 kilometers wide. It's a volcano that's so big that when it explodes, it doesn't have a peak anymore. It just leaves this big crater and kills like 90 percent of the continent. It's a continent killer. And it happens every six to eight hundred thousand years. Yeah, we got time, right? <laughs> Yeah. Stop it. I think it was we'll 600,000 years ago. I think we'll make it. Yeah, they have thousands of earthquakes there every year. Yeah. Thousands. Thousands of oh, earthquakes. God, and they, they have no idea what's going to happen, whether or not. It, and it, but if it does blow, there's nothing left. There's we, literally nothing left. And that's happened many times. We've got to do something about this. There's nothing you can. Enjoy we, yourself. Stack something we don't need it. it. We just don't need it. Somewhere out there in space Ugh. is a five mile wide piece of iron that's going 45,000 miles an hour. <laughs> when it hits, within the first second and a half, it will be five miles deep into the earth within the first second and a half. And it doesn't matter. It's a reset button, and we're fucked. No reset, what. yeah. There's nothing you can do to stop that. It's just that another fucker. fucking Gulf of Mexico somewhere. Yeah, and the Yucatan. Another That's Yucatan a, Peninsula. Yeah. and uh, Anything bigger than a fucking rat, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> the rat's got to then yeah. evolve into something else. And How does that happen? In 65 million years, the whole thing was done. Everything was done except for little tiny animals, and then it became this. This. Elephants. Birds, what, giraffes, from squirrels to woolly yeah. mammoths. Yeah, from yeah, squirrels, squirrels to woolly mammoths. The, the so you, all, you brought it all right around. You've got to bring that around. Sure. <laughs> it's amazing when you really think about that, that well, that happened in 65 is. million years. But 65 million years is a long time. Mm -hmm. And that was the, kind of the point you were making before. It's a about, really long yeah. time. I, I find it amazing how long the dinosaurs uh, were, were on Earth. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to how long we are, and they, so does my four-year-old son. And the, yeah, see, dinosaurs, <laughs> the they're fascinating. I love it. <laughs> little toys at home. What's really dinosaurs. fascinating is fucking crocodiles, yeah. like dinosaurs that are still here. Still yeah. here. Yeah. That's... If there wasn't a crocodile, and you saw a, a movie with a crocodile in it, you'd be going, "Could you imagine if that thing was real?" Well, that's, that's true. like a monster. That's they true don't have for, to yeah. fucking almost breathe everything. underwater. Yeah, that's true like, for almost everything. I mean, spiders. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. A praying mantis. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Have you, you heard, heard of a praying the... mantis? Then you see that motherfucker. <laughs> have you heard of the Brazilian the wandering spider? You want to talk about a motherfucker of a spider? The most toxic spider known to man. This spider's killed more people than any other spider, and this is how it kills. It was you. one particular spider? Yeah, the Brazilian wandering no, I mean, one spider. Just one spider. 
spider. Oh, yeah, serial killer. killer. That's spider. That's spider. Serial killer spider. This is how it kills you with incredibly painful, unending erections. Huh. What? What? The toxin from this spider Wait, from makes, Brazil? causes Fingers. nitric oxide. Yeah, from Brazil, That's of course. Again, more crazy shit from Brazil. On. You first, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you first. And by the way, they're actually using it as a cure. They're trying to use it as a cure for erectile dysfunction. You because first. Because it creates Joe. nitric right. oxide, a massive uh, supply of it where your dick, if you survive this, your dick's broken. Because it's basically <laughs> you redline your dick. It's like, you just blow it out. <laughs> and it just, boom, blows pistons through the fucking, through the what manifold. The and it's done. I mean, it, 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 it kills people, but the people that it doesn't kill, your dick is done forever. You're, it wrecks your sexual life. You no more, no more harm. Now this this comes from biting you anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't have to bite you on the dick. That's which right. No. You're right on the very tip. Of yeah, the right dick. on the tip of well, your it dick. It causes you know, very because painful. guys try to fuck them. Massive <laughs> pain in all your muscles. Massive pain throughout your entire and body. And the spider's just walking around out yeah, there. Yeah, just walking. Well, it's a wandering spider too. It doesn't have a neck. I'm just saying, who's got a little stick? I mean, this stick with a bandana with his goods tied on. Yeah, it was really eight of them, I guess. It was really, it was really a setup to my point. Why would you ever go in the woods or hike in that area? Don't fuck that. Terrifying. Don't ever go anywhere where money doesn't matter. <laughs> don't ever go anywhere Something where money doesn't matter. Some words ethic. to live by, Lloyd. I, I went into the Everglades by. once, and when you haven't got, if you've got a I'm thousand dollars in your hand, and it won't help you, doesn't you matter. don't want to be there. Right, right. You don't want to be there. Yeah. Oh, don't man. ever go anywhere where money doesn't the matter. The Everglades are quote, so yeah. crazy because people, these fucking assholes, go to pet stores and buy vipers and all these crazy fucking snakes and they go well, I don't want this anymore and they throw them into the swamp and now they're eating crocodiles have you seen that shit <laughs> have you seen that picture there's a fucking photo I, I, of I, an alligator that's half eaten by a python I don't believe that picture is real really oh, I, think think it's I, think, I think there was something on Snopes about it but I might be I might be missing well, we'll have to look into that but I know well first of all there's a show where they go but after them and kill them the Everglades. Yeah. don't get me wrong <laughs> I'm not going on they're record not saying there's not dangerous they're alien shit. species I might argue I might argue argue with you about exactly when civilization started, but dangerous shit in the Everglades, we are brothers on <laughs> no that. Argument there, right? no, there's no argument. I, I don't went, have any knowledge about when civilization started. I'm re-quoting some was, people who... I was lied to by E.O. Wilson. <laughs> who's that? You know, the, the entomologist who's the uh, who's the real expert on all ants. Uh, E.O. Wilson's the uh, the uh, uh, biologist at, uh, at Harvard, and he cock. And he, um, I always, whenever I say Harvard, I follow with cock. cock you know, when yeah. people say, why'd you, why'd you say cock? I say, why'd you say Harvard? It just it reminds you that every time you hear the word Harvard, you should say cock, cock. Because then it just reminds you that that might not be as important as they think if they went to Harvard. Cock. But anyway, e. E.O. Wilson said to me, we want to do a bit on Letterman. Here was the bit on Letterman. I was reading something of E.O. Wilson's about pheromones, you're right? And that ants would follow the trails. So I thought, here's a boss thing we'll do. We'll go on Letterman, okay? We'll treat his desk with pheromones in the shape of the three of clubs. And then we will say we have psychic ants. We'll have Letterman pick a card. We'll force the three of clubs. Uh, Letterman will show it to the ants. We'll dump them out on his desk. And over the course of the whole show, the ants will spell three of clubs. How boss will that be? So I call E.O. Oh, Wilson. Wow. And I go, will this work? And he goes, yes. I said, what kind of ants? We talked to several entomologists, and they're all talking about different species of ants. And then someone says they're they're in the, the Everglades. And I can't get an entomologist to give me these ants. So I say to one of our crew guys, fuck it. We're going to go to the Everglades, find these ants. So I go with a guidebook Holy and a rent-a-car. And the one thing he tells you? me is, because he's got such a good sense of humor, is he says, when you go in there, in order to find these ants and dig them up and use them, you can't use any um, any insect repellent. So no deep, no nothing. So I go into the Everglades, sweating like a motherfucker in a T-shirt and shorts with a shovel and a guidebook to try to find ants that I could put on Letterman. And as I walk into the Everglades, fuck the crocodiles, I get attacked by every species of insect. And I'm, so as God is my man. witness, swear to God, there were at least 12 wandering spiders right on my dick. It was just horrible and a nightmare. And I was in the Everglades. 
Everglades with my shovel and my guidebook to our crew guy, Robbie, crying, saying, <laughs> never go anywhere that money doesn't matter. You never hear- go anywhere money doesn't matter. You want to hear a crazy ant statistic? And it didn't work. It didn't work yeah, anyway. I know. The biomass of ants is more than all the, all the rest of life on Earth. Are you going to give me that one? No, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say shit. it's the same the the same weight as humans the amount of ants no uh, no 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 all animals really i don't know about that because I, I read it recently i read it recently a lot of fucking ants i read it recently that it's humans that said it so he's a lying sack of shit. Answer, he sent me to the Everglades. Most dangerous thing in Africa. They eat more things than anything. They eat elephants. They climb into the elephant's ear and just start eating their fucking brain while the oh, elephant's walking around. Jesus. Uh, yeah. well, <laughs> Army ants are a motherfucker, <laughs> for, dude. For humans, for yeah. humans, wow. it's uh, mosquitoes, though. See, mosquitoes are the most because of malaria. Yeah, because yeah. of malaria and because of we us banning DDT in the most racist move ever done in history. Banning DDT is racist. Uh, uh yeah. It was essentially saying Americans saying BET. We've we've. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I always get that confused. <laughs> no, we we conquered we conquered oh, malaria geez, in the United uh, States. It's a different kind so of So Silent, <laughs> Silent Spring comes out and we banned DDT worldwide and sentenced probably 500 million people to death. That could be a uh, could. Be Wow, yeah, the, the banning the DDT was because of what reason? It was really a uh, racist it was a, reason? It was most, no, no, mostly a book called Silent Spring by Rachel Carson and uh, about the eagle, the ZPG e- e- eagle legs. Oh, getting, eagle, eagle legs, legs getting, getting all soft and probably yeah, not that's legs, right. The American eagle. But if yes. those people were dying of malaria in the USA, I contend that we would not have banned DDT. It's the fact that it was people in mostly Africa and India that that we decided to ban it worldwide, which we kind of did. In India, mm. they still use it some. But DDT is a wonder drug. DDT is like the polio vaccine for malaria. And we let it, uh, we took it off the uh, market. And, DDT uh, is a pesticide, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it really does take down mosquitoes. What is the really bad well. part? There must be something bad. Yeah. <laughs> What's, What's bad? Uh, the bad uh, thing there? There's, there's a lot of bad, but not as much bad as children dying of malaria. It's always mm. a trade-off. Wow, yeah. I'm a big DDT fan. <laughs> I never would have that. I never would have yeah. uh, had you yeah. as a DDT yeah, fan. I, tell you the I, truth. I, I, wear the little, I wear the hat. Yeah. I wear the hat and I cheer and I paint my face like DDT yeah. on certain holidays. <laughs> well, what do they what do they say is wrong with DDT? I don't I'm, well, I'm ignorant about it. There's a book called uh, Silent Spring that said that it was going to go into our food chain and do all sorts of damage all the way up. Robin eggs were thinner, eagle eggs were thinner, the shells of them, hmm. and there was all sorts of damage. Whether that stuff is true, uh, it certainly wasn't as true as they said. Certainly, you don't get anything. good good without trade-offs. There mm-hmm. is some bad about DDT, but 500 million people, you've got to have a pant load of bad to <laughs> let those people die. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Were that many people going to die from using it? Uh, yeah, probably well, not. exactly. That's yeah. the point. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's very easy to be an environmentalist, a uh, hardcore environmentalist, when you are rich and white and living in the USA. <laughs> you know, when you're not battling Brazilian wandering spiders crawling up your ass. <laughs> yeah. Biting your dick, yes. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly the rainforest is going away, too. You ever watch, like, go to a website that shows you uh, how much of the rainforest we're losing yeah. every day? I it's fucking terrifying. Hate I haven't noticed from my house. <laughs> <laughs> I just Look sit out the there, window. I watch TV. Cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same, same pine view. trees out I back. I don't care. The, um, what am I gonna do? Yeah, the rainforest is disappearing at an incredible rate. And with the rainforest, a lot of wandering spiders. Spiders. Well, a lot of other no shit homes. too. The, the fungus. The, the these. Uh, they, they're finding all these zombie funguses. Have you seen all these different? Uh, oh yeah, I just saw that zombie fungus that was going right through uh, one of those uh, ants' head. ants' yeah. heads and controls the ants and yeah. rewires their brains. That's fucking. But the, the the great the article that I was reading a lo- uh, quite a while ago about the uh, the the rewiring of the ants' brain had this great sentence in it that said. The uh, the fungus makes the ant do things no sane ant would do. <laughs> I just love that, that our language is so great. It can have the sentence do things that no, no sane, sane, sane ant would do. Ant. Hey, Bob's climbing up on the top of the st- <laughs> the sheep is gonna eat him. That crazy motherfucker. There's some sort of thing in his brain. Get him down. Get him down. We're all reasonable ants. Aren't He's we? doing things look no sane him. ant would do. Look at look at Bob. And I know all ants are female. Oh, fuck you. But he can still be named Bob. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. just give me that drill. There's men named Shirley. Sure. <laughs> Bobby. Gross. Right? Bobby I'm, Shirley. I'm, Bobby, find, Bobby the female ant. Yeah. I find one of the most amazing things is that it's Friday. It's and about a quarter here. to 11, and only I'm still here. Make us, uh, <laughs> only you guys would make us. Only you guys we would stay late for. I'll tell exactly. you right now. Exactly. 10 o'clock. 10. Really? 
Yeah, but you yeah, guys are way it. too good to oh, pass no, up on. Oh, that's too much fun. What are you kidding? Well, you're talking about what St. Ants will do and seeing a guy's yeah. asshole. Yes. That's yeah. a good morning. That is true. In the rainforest. Uh, yeah. Did you hear about that guy that walked the entire length of the of the rainforest, really? the entire length of the Amazon? Took him 800 days. H- how about this, how about this guy that? that's yeah. going to run from pole to pole? They call Who? him the Forrest Gump of Australia. <laughs> I think his name is... A farmer or something? He's a guy from Australia, and he's training by running 26 miles a day, a marathon every day. He's going to run 50 miles a day from pole to pole. I know there are problems with running yeah, across water. Yeah, there are some water, kind of... But he's planning on doing that. And what I loved about this being a fat guy, it's important to care about this, he has to take in 6,000 calories a day, so he has to... Or no, maybe it's 12,000. 12,000 calories a day, so he has to drink olive oil to get enough calories. Whoa, and I'm whoa, always whoa, going, oh, boy, I hate the idea of running, but that drink of the olive oil. <laughs> so, you know, guys who climb Everest have to eat sticks of butter. You really? Know, yeah. You, you just can't get enough calories into you. You're burning so many. So if you're running 50 miles a day, one of your big problems is getting enough calories. And the way to solve that is by drinking olive oil, which is very sexy. Oh, man, Jesus, that's that got to make horrible. some nasty dumps. Just to run from pole to Greasy pole to dumps. say you did it. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I you know, agree. What, what is that nonsense? I agree. I'm I don't know. 50 miles a day. Show the world. Like yeah. 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 They'll yeah. shut up then. They'll leave me alone then. Once so I run silly. pole to pole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but how, everything must be, is. Everything yeah. is. There must be some crazy motivation from childhood. He's doing yeah, some yeah. wedgies that just will never <laughs> get out of his mind. He's doing some sort of, it's some sort of charity thing. He's raising money for, I think, something that's uh, undeniably good, like fighting cancer or something. But he's, you know, he's not doing it just to, the DD, I, I want to get uh, he kids to the yeah. pole, and yeah. right when he gets there, a polar bear eats his asshole, <laughs> <laughs> just comes running after him, and just starts tearing his asshole apart, but 12, right when they have cameras calories on calories a day. Yeah. That's a lot of food. calories a day. Yeah. yeah. That's how several does, pizzas. Iraq, how do you get that? Oh. Oh, see, because oh, we make fun because he's a little chubby. Oh, the uh-huh. chubbiness. Yeah. Okay. He's okay. He's looking for a comeback right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's searching. <laughs> uh, just said, believe me. Well, he's just going to take but it. Eat, eat, done eat that. butter. Yeah, that that's... Part of climbing uh, Everest, I'm okay with. That sounds all right. In fact, the list of things that I like about climbing Everest, eating butter. <laughs> eating butter. It's on the top <laughs> of the list. End of the list. No, yeah. that's the end of the list. Oh, that's it. There's nothing else. Think of something else good about climbing Everest. Seeing Wiggling the bodies. your toes every step so they don't fall Freezing off. Freezing cold. Not good. Freezing cold. Not, not good. Breathing. Not being able to breathe. Not good. Falling to your death. Not good. What about seeing yeah. all the bodies, the hundreds? Hundreds of bodies on are the left way up. up there. Not good, or you put it on the positive. Not that could negative. be kind of okay, cool. Negative, good. Yeah. That's negative for me too. But I just didn't want us to get into a little but thing how about what does a dead body. From the internet, you it's positive. It was, from the internet, it's positive. When you're there in person, it's like, what am I doing? How old does a body have to be before it's cool to look at? Like, if there's some explorers from the 1800s, yeah. and there's their encampment, and that's where they died, you look and go, all right, that's kind of cool. If it's someone last week, you're like, ah, body. With the North Here, Face jacket the on. Fuck that. Too soon. Yes, too yeah. soon. Too soon. The, too soon to look at a dead body. Too soon to look at the dead the body. Gear looks old, I think it's you're, once you're, the shit smell in. goes away, you're okay. The first the guy that ever climbed away. Everest. Rule of thumb. Rule of I like that. Rule of thumb. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Any joke you want to make, once the shit smell goes away, go crazy. You're in. Now, what did you it's guys okay. think about Gilbert Godfrey getting in trouble for tweeting all those? Yeah, the yeah, things Japanese about things. I, I'm, you know, I'm from the school of thought, as they say. Uh, anything, I, I think anything should be able to be said. But there are but no. But there are consequences. There are no bad guys in this. A- Aflac is a uh, is an insurance company. Right. Being edgy is not an upside for an insurance company. No. You know, mm-hmm. I'm very good friends with Gilbert, and I talked to him a lot about this. And uh, I didn't know they were 75 percent Japanese. Amazing. Who knows? But when Gilbert made those jokes, and everybody forgets this, Gilbert was making those jokes before he saw the future. You know, we didn't know on that Friday uh, how terrible it was going to get. Right. And there is a certain line there. So Aflac did exactly the right thing, and so did Gilbert. You know, the uh, you have to say, when you are as brilliant as Gilbert, it is your job to society to say anything that pops <laughs> into your head. Now, without Twitter, 
that doesn't happen. Because without yeah. Twitter, he doesn't get to say it until a week later when he already knows shit. But none of us, and I don't mean in entertainment, I mean in the world, know how to use Twitter yet. So it's a it's a nutty situation that Joe, just while he was talking to us, sent out to a million people something that I said. He could have made a mistake there. I was know? going to, but I forgot what your exact <laughs> quote was. Don't go anywhere where money doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, when we're done here, I'll do that. But, okay. I mean, but <laughs> yeah, So I think, I think you've got a situation that's horrible with no bad guys. It's Once again, you don't see mm. evil. It's not like the Affleck mm. guy said, I want to stop all freedom of speech, fuck him. Right. He was like, oh, man, that's really bumming some of our customers. we got to stop it. Yeah. And, you know, Gilbert... It's a good take. Gilbert did not say, I have no respect for people who are suffering in Japan. That isn't part of it. I mean, as Joan Rivers said, and it's, you know, she's exactly right on this, uh, there are many, many ways of dealing with grief. Entombing the them. reactor is a last resort. This is the next thing they're talking about when it comes to this. Oh, so man. there you go. Jesus. Fucking so scary. 10,000 years oh. from now, that's what will be left. Yes, yeah. a and boiling glowing, but not nuclear really, core. Not really that much more scary than the tsunami and the earthquake. I mean, the tsunami and the earthquake will kill more people than the nuclear thing. Yeah, yeah but the tsunami and the earthquake, when they're done, they're done. Well, no, they're not done. <laughs> this fucking That's thing a is a halfway for 20,000 years not done, shit. They're, they're not done, they're done. They're moving the whole continent inches, noticeable amounts. They're yeah. not done, they're done. There's bad shit that happens everywhere. Well, I'm, 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 I'm definitely not doubt, doubting that, but I'm saying that this is a scary thing, this not being able to shut down nuclear power plants. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is this scares the fuck out of me, man. I was wondering about Japan moving. How far they say it moves? Eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet. Was it that? Is yeah, that gonna fuck GPS up? Where you're gonna? It's gonna tell you to turn eight feet before <laughs> you're supposed to. But look, at the, look at the bright side. You're not gonna be driving in Japan for a while. No. Yeah. No, absolutely <laughs> not. That's something you don't have to worry about. City. Just get a driver while you're there. The it's satellites have no clue that anything moves. They yeah. just have a grid. And... But there's a gap in the ocean floor that's 50 miles wide and 200. 70 miles long where the epicenter was. And is that wow, where Godzilla man. is? Wow. Yeah, that's what's going to come out of there, man. Uh, I mean, if we were ever going to get Godzilla, this that is the time. It. Yeah, yeah, this is the time. It's got I nuclear think stuff. I think we've we shown it. that Godzilla's total bullshit. In the what Earth? is this U.S. evacuation region? What the fuck is oh, that? That's about? where uh, no US American citizens. soldiers or citizens are allowed oh, to go oh. in. We, we, our, our zone's a little bigger than the Japanese yeah, one. They're like, nah, you can We're not believing their zone. Yeah, we're not We're not buying that zone. But I don't think, don't worry, we're not evacuating San Francisco. Well, it's, that, it's, it's, yeah, that's the, the the weird thing when you see online these these cloud fucking scenarios. Oh, they were showing kind of uh, yeah where radiation would go, picked up on the jet stream and dumped on uh, northern uh, the North uh, Pacific. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's not good. That's a little no, odd. That's a little. I, but worrisome. I think it's supposed to be just a minuscule a bit, amount, like just a, a little like radioactivity. Well, there's yeah, a lot like, of people that believe every time you go through the X-ray thing, the new thing at the airport, it's fucking up your DNA. Yeah, yeah but. I think those are people that are politically motivated, possibly. They said yeah. in Hong Kong right now, which is however many miles away, you're getting the exact radiation of one one-hundredth of an x-ray. Oh, see, that's, hmm. not that that's bad. We could take that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we, you uh, we you had a thing at the TSA recently. I was reading about that. It wasn't recently. It, it just showed up. It was in 2002. Two that really? they, that I was I was I was against TSA before it was cool. Um, <laughs> <You're> a, <pioneer. laughs> a guy a, a guy you know was was grabbing my, uh, my what what did the guy say? The guy was grabbing my cock, junk. filling me up. No, no, it was junk for that guy. But for me, uh, the uh, I what you always do at TSA. What I believe is, if anything goes wrong, you ask for real police. Because uh -huh. real police hate leather sniffers. You know, <laughs> they hate guys playing police. Right. Whenever you have a confrontation with a mall cop, you know, fake cop, if you get a real cop in there, he's, the dynamics always go to your side. Unless, on your you side. know, you're doing something really egregious. And so I went through, and this guy just said, hey, don't do that. And he started giving me some attitude, and I said, uh, call the police. And he said, no, we don't need to call the police. You've done nothing wrong. I said, no, I haven't. You have. Call the police. <laughs> and he said, no, no, you don't have to call. I said, no, no, I, that's my right as a citizen. Get Metro in here. It was in Vegas. Uh -huh. And then the real police officer goes, says, you were grabbing his dick? 
<laughs> but I said, you know, I don't care. Really, anyone can grab my dick. You just have to ask me beforehand. I require dinner, anything. Right, right. I'm not homophobic. I don't care. Grab just my dick. Just let cock. me know you're going to do but it. I also care a lot about the Constitution, a lot about freedom. So it's a weird combination. I don't just put need out to a protect. very strange invitation, I don't sir. need to protect. I don't need to protect my cock, but I'd like to for the sake of my country. Right. So my cock is a patriotic area. It's not, I don't, you know, I'm not afraid of anything. So um, do you think he was grabbing your dick just to humiliate you? No, no, no. You? Yeah, yeah. It was just to, because I showed a little attitude. Imagine me showing a little attitude. Oh, no. He must have misinterpreted something. <laughs> it must have been just I had a belch or something, and the look on my face looked yeah. like I was contemptible to him. And in 2002, <laughs> if you questioned anything, you were unpatriotic. That yeah. was the height of fever. Oh, my God. And you know what they yes. did, though? You know what the final thing they did was? Is after I did this little... And I tried to do it very politely and through proper channels and stuff, through the police officer. The uh, TSA person in Vegas called up and said, you know, Penn, uh, we don't want to have any trouble with this. When you're going to fly somewhere, you just let us know, and we'll get you through without going through the security. I'll see. And I went, no, no, I don't want special treatment. It wasn't about me. It was about the idea of it. As a matter of fact, you're much more welcome to feel me up than the than the elderly ladies and the children who you're frightening to death. I don't <laughs> yeah. give a fuck. You know, that is the worst. But when it's you amazing. see old ladies getting uh, stripped, they like, get why? filled up and their yeah. arms stretched out. Like, come on, Give this lady's break. shaking. Right. She can't even right. hold her arms out. Hunchback. She doesn't shit. know what it means. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's just it's just horrible. But that's you know that's what they do. And the reason I didn't, you know, the, the police officer said, you know, I saw this. He was acting wrong. You can go the lawsuit is I felt it would come across as this fucking Vegas magician thinks he's special and doesn't want people right, touching him. Sure. So I didn't want to come off like as that's that not kind the of point. Guy. But right. I want to say, I want to add to this that I've never taken that special treatment. I turned them down. Yeah. Because it just seems so fucking wrong. It's like, oh, you can go on TV, you can complain about this, let's take you through the special line. Now, I also don't know if that offer is available anymore. <laughs> I don't want people going crazy and saying there's a special line, people don't have to get checked. I don't even know if it existed. She could have been bluffing all <laughs> yeah. of that. I never found she out. She go it's, through it with like one Layers and layers of clothes on, sweating like a pig. <laughs> yeah. Looking, but I mean, it's it's uh, knows you know, what's behind that security. Door. It's security theater, and I think everybody everybody knows that. it. Really is. It's it's there to kind of make you feel like they're doing something, but uh, things slip through all the time. Yeah, didn't right? they just have a thing in the the, the post? But it was the Daily News or the Post. They yeah. showed knives and shit. They yeah. just snuck knives. Through. Just guy guy brought a box cutter on the plane, and I I think because it was for his job or something, and he had it in there and. And he's the one that said, like, look, I didn't mean to have this. And they freak out then. Oh, well, come on out. you got to come out. It's like he was fessing up to the fact yeah. that he had it on well, him. You know, we also have the point that they put pilots through that shit. The pilots go through yeah, it. Yeah. And the, you, the pilots, you know, he's they the, have a way to do it. They, yeah, once yeah. you're the pilot <laughs> of the fucking plane, you don't have to worry about nail clippers. You really don't have, yeah. Well, yeah do you they, remember that guy in Egypt, the, the pilot oh, that fucking man, took the plane down? The and plane, was, yeah. He's screaming, Allah Akbar. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he crashed the plane. What did he, he he laid a hammer over the co-pilot's uh, head yeah, or something yeah. And, yeah. and just decided, that's it. This is so it. I'm going in. Time to wrap the problem it up. is, once you're going to kill everybody, including yourself, in the plane, hitting a guy in the head with a hammer, not that it, bad. Really not that I bad. Mean, <laughs> if you're looking at what you're going to do you're on the way to that, you know, that's, that's Unless okay. It's, once uh, you brain foil. him, though, that's a commitment. You, you don't want to yeah, change you gotta, your mind after yeah, that. You can't worse, say Worse it. than saying no in improv. <laughs> there's there's a, a, an amazing story of a freight line. It's what it was FedEx or UPS, one of the airplanes, using an old one of those L ten elevens, and a uh, uh, guy wanted to uh, kill himself, get the insurance money for his family. One of these old gags. So he flies on the jump seat, has a hammer on him, and goes into the uh, flight deck and just starts beating the shit out of the pilot and co-pilot. Uh, and one of the guys got up, and they were major league fucked up in the head, like bleeding on their brains and grab this guy and as they're fighting the guy pulls out a knife he's stabbing one guy and the pilot who's also semi-conscious just starts rolling the plane over and now the co-pilot and the the hijacker at this point it's now a hijacker are fl are flopping from the ceiling to the floor of the plane he's trying to knock this guy out using acrobatics with the plane holy shit finally got him to the point where the co-pilot was able to hold him down and they landed the plane uh they went both wound up with uh really horrible head injuries and everything but landed the fucking plane and thwarted the uh the guy's wow. attempts to crash the plane an amazing story 
uh, I, I, I saw it on one of those um, uh, minutes before disaster wow. shows. That's crazy. Yeah, unbelievable. How many people in the fucking main cabin got fucked up yeah. landing on their head? It was, and it, shit? Was, it was a freight. Yeah, it was, it a, was freight, a freight. It was, oh, a, it was freight a freight thing. Freight and some of the freight was coming out and smashing these guys. And wow. the way the story was told was just like, oh my god, that's horrific. The way the story was told was like they had a fill cable television hour. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and exactly. Was you and I was right there watching action recreations. I, I, recreation. I, I love a good I know, recreation. I know, I know that way. That, that we have we have eight hundred we have eight hundred channels. They're running twenty four hours a day. You try to fill them up, it. motherfucker. That's I great. love them. I can't get enough. We got to get out of here. Watch everything. Yeah, Ron and Ron Fez, Fez are starting like on. two minutes. Jesus. Beautiful. You guys can stick around for Ron and Fez. Hey, they love people. <laughs> what are the plugs? Joe Rogan. You just uh, nothing. Podcast. Uh, yeah, nothing. Follow that, me on Twitter. We're at Joe. See tomorrow night. Uh, Chuck Liddell. Anything? Just hanging. Just hanging. Ari. Fights. Anything? Chuck at Ari Shapiro. All right. right. We're at the Real All Sweets in Las Vegas, Nevada, and tell their show Play Dead yeah. is at the Player Theater. And you guys should go. I'm to finally see going. Fucking play. Didn't Jimmy go see it? See it. Yeah, Jimmy told me I got to go now. Jimmy so. saw it said it was amazing. Well, yeah, I'm, really I'm going to go check it out. Go what is it. Play Dead? What is it? Play Dead is a show that Teller wrote and directed at the Players Theater, and it's like an old-fashioned spook show where you're in the dark and it scares you, and it's also funny and thrilling, and it's a really cool and where's show. where's it at? It's at the Players Theater. Where's it's right that? here in New York City. Oh, okay. And uh, and uh, it's great. It's great. It's a, it's a one-man show by Todd Robbins, but Teller wrote it and directed it, and it's uh, it's not really a one man show. There's a lot of people sneaking around in the fucking dark, <laughs> and now Teller's going to yell at me. No, crazy. it's a one man show. No one's sneaking around the fucking dark. There's no one sneaking around the fucking dark. It's a one man show. He's doing it all himself. Yeah, except for the people sneaking around the fucking dark. You retard. But uh, yeah, but it's just an asshole. <laughs> man. And he doesn't even do drugs. Uh, no, it's thank God. So far, it's You'll just so far. There's still far. hope. Yeah, I might never go know. get fucked up with you right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be amazing. There's hope, hope. There's hope for the world. <laughs> We're going to start our weekend, man. Uh, yeah. Penn's Light, it was a pleasure. Okay. It was a pleasure hey, just thanks, fucking checking guys. this Absolutely. out, man. Absolutely. A lot of fun. Hey, see you guys Monday. And go see his fucking show. All right. We will. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>